Well, it's that time of year again in March when I start thinking about building birdhouses. So today I thought I would build a screech owl house. Quite a few of you, if you're living in southern Canada or throughout the United States, probably have screech owls living around your places if you're out in the country at all, or even on the edges of towns and cities. This is one of many plans for screech owl houses that you can find on the internet. This is the rough one that I used for my design and I did make some modifications as I'll tell you about. So a box like this can be typically built out of a single piece of 1 by 10 pine, 8 feet long. This one is a good one sideboard, so it's rough on one side and smooth on the other. It gives you a little bit of extra thickness for the wood. You could also use rough cut wood, which would be almost a full inch thick. The standard one by material that you buy at most lumber stores is planed on both sides and comes to a thickness of about three quarters of an inch. This one here would be probably closer to, uh, yeah, seven eighths pretty well, a little bit thicker. And then, as I mentioned, the rough cut wood would be very close to an inch thick. Just gives you a little bit more thickness to work with. Now, this isn't the highest quality lumber. Um, it's already cupping a bit since I brought it in the house, which means the, the board is sort of curving this way a little bit, which isn't great, but hopefully if I build it now, I can get it put together before it gets worse. So I cut this 26 inch piece off the board for the back of the house. Then I cut one of the sides to length. So it's got a 17 inch back, which will screw into the backboard that I just showed you. And the front of this side is 15 inches high. So now we'll just use this same angle to draw a duplicate using this board as a template. So you don't have to do any measuring again. You just use this board as a template for the next side. Get it all lined up. Draw the line. Now I'll cut on the outside of this line. If I cut on the inside, it would make this side shorter than this one. So that's just one little thing you have to be careful of every time you cut. And the blade I use has about an eighth of an inch thickness. So I'll be cutting out here, cutting this section here off. So this is the front board for the house. It's 15 inches long, roughly, and it takes a three inch hole. So basically you, and the center of the hole is 11 and a half inches off the, uh, from the bottom of the board. So I'm just going to mark that here. So this will be the center of the hole, 11 and a half inches. I also know that half the width of this board, which is about nine and a half, is about four and three quarters. So now I can just cross those lines. So four and three quarters to get the center of the board this way. And I want the center of the hole at 11 and a half. So now I just need to find something. I don't have a three inch hole saw. I have a two and a half inch one. So I could use that and just do the two and a half inch and then enlarge it. In the end, I've decided to use my two and a half inch hole saw. And then I'll just go around the edge with a file and enlarge it to three inches. It's a little easier, I think, maybe. Now, ideally, you would just have a three inch hole saw. Otherwise, you can use a jigsaw. Now, when you do this, it's good to just take the drill bit through the other side and then come from this side so to prevent um, chipping and stuff. If you just go through the one side only, it'll throw out jagged edges around here more so than if you do it this way. There we go. 
two and a half inch hole. Now I'll just take it out with the file. So I've got the hole filed out larger. It's still not quite three inches, but I think it's good enough. Um, I've also enlarged the inside and outside. The rough side of this board uh, will be on the outside. Normally I'd probably put that on the inside for the birds, but because of the cupping of this board, I prefer to have the cupping going outward. So now what I'm doing is I'm just sawing some grooves on the inside of the board here so the young ones can have something to cling on to when they get old enough to try and climb out. So I do a series of these with the cutoff saw here, spaced about every half inch or so, quarter inch, down to, to a clo close to the bottom. That'll give them just something to grip onto with their nails. So here's the first stage of assembly. I had cut the back out and the two sides in the front and now I've screwed those together. As you can see here, I start screwing the uh, side, one side onto the back and I've used four one and three quarter inch outdoor deck screws for, for this and I pre-drilled each hole with a um, drill bit that's slightly smaller than the threads of this screw. Obviously you don't want to uh, disrupt the ability of the threads of the screw to pull into the wood. So your little drill bit that you use to pre-drill has to be smaller than the thread diameter. I've also used a counter sinking bit here. As you can see it's got a little cutting teeth up at the base of the bit and that enables me to counter sink the hole when it goes in so the heads of the screws sit flush against the wood instead of sitting up on the wood. Just gives a nicer appearance. And I've used three on each side of the front. Now this one typically, uh, the ones I've built like this before, I put a hinge top on. And that works okay, except it's very difficult to get up high on a ladder to open this up and look in. And so I'm thinking I may do a different method this time. I often will make birdhouses with a swing out front, and I contemplated doing that here too. Um, but it does reduce, if I put a board, if I put a front in here, to enable it to swing out, it takes another inch away from the interior diameter, which isn't huge, but it's something. So I may just screw on a top here. And then I've seen some people on the internet uh, use a little shelving mechanism. They screw in a couple slats of wood on each side and then they put the floor in and let it drop down on the slats. And then you can put a screw or one or two screws in the side to hold it there. And then in the fall, if you need to clean it out, you can remove it. Just pick, pick it up and uh, unscrew it, push it up and then clean out the nest and then put it back in again. The only issue is you can't really open it to check the nest when they're nesting if you need to. Now, usually I don't do that anyhow with kestrels. Um, unless I think something's gone severely wrong or something and then it's kind of nice to get up and just check to see what's going on but so I'm not sure I will probably use this method the only other thing you could do that I have done occasionally is I'll put a, a section of one of the sides that opens so I would, I would cut maybe the side in half here and then have it be able to swing open but I didn't do that here I was thinking I'd rather have the structural integrity of the sides a little stronger. So I'll probably use this little floor method for this one, the little floor that sits on two chunks of woods and I'll wood and I'll show you that. So this is just showing the bottom. So I put the two cleats of wood here. These are about one by one inch chunks of wood that I just nailed and screwed into the sides. 
they just hold the floor up. The floor, as you see, is loose. And it can be, uh, so it's cut just to fit in there. I have to get it through the hole up here. Get it to lay flat again. Anyhow, that's a bit of a, a trouble doing that. You have to use your hand through the hole of the house. But you get the idea. And then what you would do probably is, uh, at least what I would do, is once it's in here, I would screw it in from the side on one, one screw on each side just to hold it in place because otherwise uh, predators might be able to come up and push it up or something like that. And this shows the roof that I put on it. I actually used a 1x12 and cut it down to about 1x11 just so it would overlap the house on each side a bit. If I had used the same board as in the directions and I've done that before it just goes right along the edge of the wood which uh, doesn't look so great I prefer the overlapping look of this roof um, and again just put on with four outdoor deck screws one and three quarter inch so that's basically the main structure and I'll talk a bit more about some other things shortly here okay so here's the house mostly finished just thought I'd show the uh, more final result. So you can see I've put a little uh, bar across the front here um, just to help them get into the hole. It's not really needed. A lot of owl houses don't have this, but I think sometimes it is a nice addition. It does, they can cling on to here more easily and then pull themselves in. On the Kestrel houses, I've sometimes put this extending out here and the other mate of the one inside the box often would like to sit out there. The top and bottom ends of the backboard have these four drill holes in. I've just pre-drilled these. I may just use the two central ones in the end, but I put offset ones coming in at an angle just in case I need to use a screw to tighten tighten it to the tree so it doesn't flop back and forth a bit. So for the bottom board, you can see I've cut the corners off the main bottom board just to allow for drainage in case water ever gets into the main hole to any degree. I've also drilled a couple quarter inch holes just off from center in case water gets in and then pools in the middle of the board by any chance. I've also inserted this little eye screw in the bottom, just a small screw which enables you to grab onto the board and push it up and bring it back down more easily. You needed something to grab onto, so that's done. And you can see the uh, two cleats again on the side that hold the board at a certain level. And then as you go around the side here, you can see I've pre-drilled a hole in each side which will go into the bottom board just to hold it in place. You wouldn't want to really leave it just loose again because a predator could come up from the bottom of if it's hanging on a tree or a post of some sort it might come up and push in. Now before you set this up in the tree too um, you would want to put an inch or two of fine wood shavings in here you can use aspen wood shavings, which you can get from most pet stores. They use for hamsters and guinea pigs and those kinds of things. Those are a good option. So for this house, you would basically have to have the floor set in place and then probably um, put the shavings in through the main hole up here. And then make just sort of rustle them around to make sure they're flattened out. You can see here under the roof, I've also left a bit of a gap just to allow a bit of airflow out from the house in case it gets very hot in here. Um, obviously air can come out of this big hole as well, so I don't think there should be too much of an issue there. Now because this box design uses the mounting board as the actual back of the box, it's all one piece, you can see here the roof comes up and meets the backboard 
And because this board back here was cupped a little bit, that is curving outwards, you can see there's a bit of a gap. So I may end up running a bead of caulking along here just to make that more waterproof there. So as I mentioned, this type of bottom floor removal style isn't really probably the greatest scenario, although it has some interesting aspects to it. Um, again, you would only remove this during the non-nesting season to clean it out. You would never push this up and check it from below when there's potentially eggs in it. So you'd have to know the full nesting season of whatever may be in here, whether it's kestrels or screech owls or what have you. I would personally, with this box, I would only probably push this up in late October maybe or sometime just to clean it out if it needed it. Otherwise, the best way to build a box like this, I think, is to have probably a front opening door here. So obviously this board would be wedged between the two sideboards, and I've done this on some, many of my other houses. Not too many on the big ones like this, but uh, so you would have this board hinged up here between the two sideboards, and then it would just swing up. And then you'd have a screw down here that goes into the bottom floor. Again, because these boards were cupped, turning this way, I just felt it was going to be hard to do that and have it working properly, so I opted for this method. Anyhow, I hope that's uh, given you some ideas about how to possibly build your screech owl box or how to redesign it to your preference. The key things are getting the hole size right, approximately three inches diameter. The bottom for a screech owl should probably be anywhere from seven or eight inches square upwards to 10 inches square. Now you will see some plans on the internet that show a very narrow box, quite a long narrow box with just an opening at the top and it does seem like owls have used those but to me the interior size is far too small. Like if you have several owls in there it's going to be pretty cramped. So personally I prefer a box of this size at least. Probably seven by seven inches and up would be good, I would think, because in nature, they're not often going to be in cavities that are bigger than that anyhow, I don't think.